Diane, thank you for your phone call today. This is Mark Carver. I thought I would shoot you a little video of my face so you can put my face with my name, my name with my problem, with uh, not having retrieve anymore, and then my problem with possibly a solution. So I do thank you in advance for all that you have done. And I never would have guessed in a million years that uh, a company like Corel Draw would have a person actually call the end user to find out what the problem is. I totally have reached a new appreciation for CorelDRAW. A little bit about me, I am a commercial photographer. I have been shooting commercial work here in Kansas City for 35 years. I have thousands and thousands of photographs, some of them on real film, some of them uh, my last 12 or so years, uh, all on digital. And so the need to maintain this work through the years is vital. And so there are many programs out there that actually say they back up products, pictures, files, emails, whatever you want to either DVDs or to flash drives or to external hard drives. And I have used um, many of these sources of of storing files. Um, the one that seems to be the easiest and the most uh, available to keep track of all of my thousands of images has been DVD. And so I have done so. With that being said, many of the companies, however, really are vague. Um, their instructions are next to nothing when it comes to restoring these files that you have backed up. And when I say that is, it's amazing. Um, sometimes the restoration process doesn't work. Uh, most of the time it works fine, but it's almost like pulling eye teeth to find the image that you're looking for. With Roxio Retrieve, it was absolutely no problem at all to find a single image out of 4,000 or more photographs burned on several, spanned across several DVDs and I will be showing that to you here in just a minute. So Diane, thank you again, and you do have a great weekend, and we will stay in touch with this, and hopefully it will come to a positive resolve. So you have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Okay, Diane, this is where I store all of my work. What you see here represents about 10 years of the jobs and works that I have done and um, I store them on DVD and many times there are several of them connected together that makes one file. So what I'm going to do is locate one group that I did here recently that um, I just pulled up which reminded me the reason why I really wanted Roxio Retrieve again. Okay, we'll, we'll use this. Okay, Diane, we're trying our workstation here. Um, at the beginning, you see over on the left side, the bunny of Carabana. It's the rabbit on the Monty Python that kills everybody in its path, and so that's kind of a fun thing. I have over on the right side, of course, Nunu from Teletubbies, and uh, Nunu was the only, the only redeeming character of Teletubbies, and that's why I have Nunu. And then, of course, I have uh, Pokey and Gumby in the background, a little bit about who I am, oh, and Dominique in the foreground, my son gave that to me when he was three years old. So anyway, this is my computer screen and I'm gonna kinda sneak up close and here are the discs. I, it, it, they were six in nature and they are a DVD. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the disc into my computer and we will see what happens. With Retrieve, it doesn't matter which disc you put in. You can put in the first disc, you can put in the last disc. I'm gonna put in the first disc and you can just take a look at what you're seeing there. Take it off and drop it in and push it. Okay, so this is the uh, the screen that comes up here in a few seconds uh, with retrieve in place. It probably won't work. <laughs> It'll be the day. One or more of these files on the disk set that was split and recorded across multiple disks. A split file can be copied to your hard drive using the Roxio Retrieve utility only. So I'm not sure what that says, other than the fact that you have to use the Roxy Retrieve to create it. 
uh, but you can, any computer can open this. So attempting to copy a split file to your hard drive without using Roxio Retrieve Utility results in an unusable file. So the structure of the disk I'll show you in a little bit. When I first then press the OK button, let me zoom back a little. There you go. All right, Diane, so now that the folder is open, it's showing you uh, what you see um, on all six disks. Over on the left side, you see the file structure. There are little pluses right here, here, and here telling you that there are files inside of those. So if you open any of those, uh, basically you have the root directory, which is up here. It says it's Deacon and Deacon. This is 2012. I open that up and then it shows me that I have color card, contact sheets, so other various files in um, two folders and you can see them populate over on the right side. I'm going to choose the selected folder. I'm going to open that up and you see that it drops down and I probably should go a little bit wider so you can get an idea here. Okay, so under that, the selected folder, I have the file. A whole group of files on the right side populate when I click on that plus and now I can actually go over to the PSD files, I'll open those up, those are the, and then it populates again. You notice that the boxes are not checked. And so then um, what happens when uh, the boxes are unchecked, they just ignore them. But um, once you check a box, like let's say I want to find uh, this picture, all of these are images that I have created and worked with. So I'm just kind of looking for one that um, is kind of fun to look for, to look at. Okay, so I check that box. It automatically populates check marks over on the left side, but it also shows you some things. Uh, here we have the source disk. It tells you what disks are involved. And so the check mark that I did was come across on disk four. It also tells you, if I expand this over and move it, it also tells you as you come across where the location of the file originally was, what type of file it is. It, so let me see if I can zoom up just on that. There we go. Yeah, this picture here. So it shows me the size, the day that it was modified, that it's a Photoshop document, shows me the entire location of the file, the tree. So that's the tree structure. I'm going to pull it kind of back now. When I'm ready to retrieve that file, I, after I check it, I just simply click on this button right there. It's a little retrieve icon, so I click OK. <clears throat> and then this little window pops up it gives you a choice of where you want it to be located, either the original location, which is here, or an alternate location, which is what I like to use. I'm going to send it to my temp folder called temp, and then I just press the, the retrieve button. So you, you see the box appear here, and it says, please insert disk deacon, deaconesses 2004, and then under at the end, 04. So I'm looking for the 04 disks put number one away and I look for disk four. Three, four of six. So I put four of six in and press OK. So it reads it. It begins to find the file first, then it reads it, and then it puts it onto disk C under the temp folder, which is what I like. It says the retrieve process has uh, successfully completed. Say OK. And if you want, at this point, you can close this completely down, but I won't. OK, so now I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm using CS4 currently. There's so many things about four that's absolutely phenomenal. And I really do wish they would have maintained four and many of its benefits. But at any rate, 
That's just an old man talking. Open up the temp folder and right here under selected PSDs and there is my picture. Double click on it and it brings it up. That simple. So I'm going to try a zoomed back version. I'm going to close this. Okay, this time we're going to try it again without uh, zooming in or out or all the interactions so you can get an idea. All right, so I'm going to put in, I am now going to put in disk number five of my spanned disk project. It doesn't matter what disk you put in, the same uh, window will come up. First, it's asking you that there's um, a disk set. It span multiples, and you just say okay. It shows you then everything on the entire disk set. This is basically, this is disk number five, and it shows me everything. So all I need to do is, and be concerned about is going to the picture that I want. So I want the selected files, the ones that I've created, manipulated, and prepared for my com customer. And I am going to this time go to the, um, the PNG format. I like this. Okay. We will go to this one. And I'm going to choose number um, 100. Pastor Tina, Pastor Turner and Tina Lisa. And I'm going to press the retrieve button. And I'm going to send it to temp folder again. And I just press retrieve. And now it says to put in disk number three. It pops open automatically. All you have to do is work on grabbing disk number three. So there's five, four, three. All I have to do is put in disk number three. Doo -doo. So much fun. Press OK. And it will search the disk, find the file, and put it on, put it inside the temp folder. Retrieve has been successfully completed. Okay, so you can shut this down completely. I'm going to use Photoshop again, CS4, because it's faster, better, and not as comprehensive and crazy and clumsy and too many crazy things. You even have, look at that, bridge built into it. goes directly to bridge. You don't have to come down here and highlight and find the bridge program. CS4 bridge just automatically comes up. All right, I'm going to my temp folder. I'm going to my selected folder. This time it's a COB, so I'm opening up my COB, and there it is. And I will open it with CS4. There it is. Now the cool thing about a, a um, PNG, of course, is that you can put any kind of background behind it. Just sweet. Ta-da! Ping files are fun. All right, at any rate, that's the, all I really need to show you. So, back to my bicycle.